Okay, getting ready to assemble these heads up. I went and cleaned up all the rocker box stuff too, so we can get them together. Alright, so we have everything all checked and clearanced, so now it's time to do our assembly. We got our four valve seals here, the two fins we needed. Use the Sportster valve spring compressor. And a little bit of sleeve retainer locked tight. Oh, and assembly lube. Don't forget the assembly lube. There you go, everything you need. Now, well, still having a hammer, but we'll get that later. Okay. So this is our seal installation tool, custom made by me. All right, Slater, there's my hammer, there's my screwdriver. Important tools for Harley. Okay. First thing I do is lock tight the valve guides. So you put the seals on there. Oop. So you put a little bit of Loctite on your finger. That's a little bit more than I need. I'm going to put it around the valve guide face here. Wipe off any excess on top. Do not put Loctite in the valve stem hole. Could be some issues there if you did that. That's enough to do all four valves. Still have enough for one more. Wasteful. Okay. This is the front intake. This is the front exhaust. This must be the rear one then. Yep. That makes this the rear one. They all match up. Imagine that. Okay. Take a little bit of assembly lube. Lubricate our stems. This is the front one. I forgot to do something too. Just remembered. I've got to check to see how good of a job I did. Put the head up the light and let's see if you got any light going through the valves. That looks good. So you gotta look through the port in there, and if you see any light, up through through the top up in there. See that light right there? That'd be a leak. Make sure there's no leakage. It's called being light tight. You don't need to do a vacuum test. You just need to make sure you can see no light. Light is a lot thinner than other things. A liquid test will pass just about anything. Found that out years ago. Okay, it looks good. All right. Back to work. Should have done that last night, but I'm hot and tired and didn't get to it. So I always screw the valves in a little bit as I go in. Make sure you get the whole stem covered with oil. Spin it a little bit as you go. Make sure there's drag on it. It means there's oil doing its job. Okay, that's good. That's it for the oil. Okay, now we're going to do our seals. Okay, don't forget your shim. 
exhaust side only. Don't forget your lower collar. Then you gotta put your exhaust seal. Exhaust seal has the big hole through it. The intake has a small hole. Now if you forget to put the uh, guide on all the stuff on here before you put the seal on it, you destroy the seal. Just kind of wiggle the seal a bit as it goes on, it's on. If you did it right, they're about equal heights, see? Two heights here. Take your hammer and your tool and just beat them on in there. Light hits, not big hits. When it hits the bottom of the collar, stop. If you give it a real big hit real quick, it can pop it open and it won't close down all the way. Then it'll be loose because this has to expand and contract back onto the stem. If you can rotate the seal, it's no good. So, with my fingers, not a plier pliers. The Loctite will seal, it, will seal up for oil leakage and also Loctite it on too. So it takes care of issues down the road. Okay, shim on exhaust. Collar. Seal. Okay, all good and tight. That part's done. I'm gonna get to assemble them. Okay, so we got our exhaust spring over here. I put that long valve spring on the one of the two exhausts. I don't remember which one it was. The other three were the same, so it doesn't matter. Now take and see the collar. Got enough room to get your finger in it to come up from the back side to hold the keeper in. So keeper goes in tapered side down. Lose where you're at, just drop the keeper out of the way. Drop the keeper in there where it needs to go. This one's fighting me. I think it's in there. So I'm holding my back finger nice to drop this one here on the top. It should sit right in there like that if they're in there right. Then you're gonna do the plier uh, compressor. The lower collar, if the other one's not in there correctly, it won't go in correctly. Looks like it's in there jammed. It's hard to see it, but it's sticking up on that one side a little bit too much. It didn't feel like I was holding it correctly. I wasn't. It was fighting me. Okay, so now we do it again. This time I do it over here where I can get access instead of trying to show you how to do stuff. Do it my normal way. Same thing, but now it's done correctly. Yep. Are they sitting in there correctly? We'll hit them with the screwdriver just to make sure in a minute.
and out, take it out. Okay, that one's in there now. So you take your flat blade screwdriver and beat on it a little bit. Use the plastic hammer so you don't screw up your tools. So hit this flat against the keeper. So you hit it right here on the top, right in the center of it, just like that. And it'll pop it. And if it's not in, it should jar it and make it go in. The valve spring also compressed lightly so you know it's working correctly. Hear it. Double check again, make sure everything looks good. If it all looks good, it's in there. Here's what it look like on this side. Exhaust still doesn't look like it's sunk, but it is. Alright, I can go up on there now. Look at that. I have a hold, head holding fixture right there. It's, it, it holds two heads at a time. Looks pretty good. They're kind of expensive though, so not too many people have them. Fingers out of position. We do wrong. Pressure's in the wrong spot. I can't bend my finger around to get where I need to go. Screw it half a turn. Can't get in there with it. Yep. It's in there barely. So don't make the valve spring get your keeper in the right spot. Make sure it's in there correctly before you take the tension off of it. When they come out they hurt. Make sure you got your tool a little bit down lower than straight so you got room. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Got way too deep. See, so I had this tool at this angle straight. I need to be angled a little bit so you got room to get your finger in here. See, now I got room to get my finger in here where it belongs. My finger doesn't bend around a 90 degree turn. Makes things a lot easier when you do it correctly. Now it's in there. Give it a whack of job again.
All right, they are in. It's all sitting like it's supposed to be. Good to go. There's the other up on the hold head, the head holding fixture. Looks good. Okay. Now we can do our rocker boxes. Could be assembly time. All right. So I'm not supposed to scratch these boxes up for the customer. He's kind of picky. For some reason, he thinks I shouldn't scratch these for him. So I'll put them on the table like that. So, for this job, we got four springs. We got four thin washers, four thick washers. These thick washers are heat treated. These thin washers are soft because they're the seal washers. They seal. Okay, so I got all the parts I need there. Okay, where is the new hardware at? Hmm. There we go. New hardware. Chromium. Colony makes the good ones. Just a stock looking acorn, or not acorn, but Ellen. Bolt. That's actually a bolt. And then they have the cap style nut. Cap means it's kind of radius on top. Acorn is a full round. That would be the difference. The washers we're not going to be using because we already got four. So those are extras. The light went away. Oop, it's there. Okay. Now the other thing we need is going to need four O-ring seals. So we have to get some O-ring seals. I like using quad seals, which they usually give you in the gasket set. I'm not seeing them there. And they don't appear to be over here. Why well, do they not have a quad seal? Looks like they're getting cheap. They're not giving me the quad seals anymore. That's kind of crappy of them. But they did give me the Evo seal, which shouldn't be in the kit. Okay. Evo seals are big fat ones. They also fit twin cams too, but we don't count those. Those are the upper push rod. Actually, his bike doesn't take those. Or does he? Nope, he is a cork style motor. See, there's no O-ring lip on this, so no O-ring. So he doesn't use those. So we are missing the O-rings I like using. So what we'll do is we'll do some trading. We'll trade these ones out for the ones we need. We do that a lot. You're going to be using the cork seals in this motor. Okay, so now I'm going to need uh, some quad seals. Let's we'll find some quad seals. Mm, looks like some right there on top. Look at that. Quad seals. 
Does anybody know what they call a quad seal? A quad seal. There's a Hurley number somewhere. 11118. So, instead of being an O-ring like this, where it's full round, quad seal has eight surfaces. It's an O-ring with four corners on it, radius corners. So it seals on the side twice, and it seals on the end twice. So it has two seals, whereas this has one seal on each side. So this has a lot better chance of sealing than this one does. Plus this is round section, this is rectangular section, or square section. And it just so happens that the rocker shaft is not round, it is square. See how that fits right up on there? So it fits perfectly. And your cap right here goes up here on the top and squishes down and seals it. As it squishes this, it pushes outside and seals it up. Whereas an O-ring sits on there and it just it has to squeeze itself to that cross section. So, obviously that was not the right O-ring. Who's going to be the first dumbass to tell me that? Okay, the ear is no shimming on this because these have a spring that goes on there. In a heat treated washer, it goes there. So these are spring loaded. See? No shimming required. Unless you want to. A lot of times with race bikes, we'll put solid spacers in here and eliminate the spring. Then you can shim them a little bit. If you want to. Okay, the other thing is we got on these rocker arms, we got ones have oil holes in them and ones don't. oil hole. So you can either squirt the intake or squirt the exhaust. I always forget which one goes where. On the race bike I put all squirters on all four of them. Because I like to lubricate. So I put them on the intake because I want the valve train lubricate up on top. Oil goes down. The exhaust will get hit from spray from the top. Otherwise it sits way up high in the rocker box because of the way the motor's made. Intake's high, exhaust is low. So this will squirt oil out here all over the place and it'll drop down and hit that one too. If it was open. Now these boxes here are not open. You know, they're solid. So you only get one thing that's lubricated. So now you gotta figure out which one you want to lubricate. Other motors, everything's open under there. So I forget which one's which. We're going to probably lubricate the exhaust because it runs hotter, be my guess. I like doing the intake and exhaust both. Alright, so I guess I'll have to go figure out which one's which now. Damn it. I'll be back. Alright, I was right. Exhaust is lubricated because it wants to flood it with oil because it's hot. Like I said on my race bike, I flood them all. Okay, so two and two. So these are exhaust, these are intakes. They're all four different because they're mirror image of each other. Okay, so this is the intake always has the oil line to it because the oil line comes up the middle of the motor right here and goes up. So I say tell real quick which one this is. This is the intake, that's the exhaust. Quickly I tell them. Okay, so first thing we do is lubricate the parts. The bushing in here. My finger don't fit in there, so I make do. Okay, these are individually fitted, so keep them next to each other. Over there, then.
Okay. So this is exhaust over here. So this means this goes in exhaust. Like that. So this is the shaft that goes with that one. Lubricate the shaft. Try to put the worst spot on the downside. So it'll be toward the head. Because that's where the pressure's at. So we're going to try to put this in this way. We'll see if it stays. Don't forget you need a washer and a spring. And they're pretty easy. You gotta tap them in just a little bit. Like that. Okay, that was the exhaust. Now the intake is going the other direction. Is this one? It has no oil hole in it. And that's this shaft. Shaft's better than the last one, so this is the worst side, so that's the best side. That. So you hold the spring and the like that drops in correctly. Okay, that one's in. Let's see the towel. This whole shirt there. That'll work. Okay, so now we got the other exhaust. Goes on the exhaust side. Go like that. Kind of see a little bit better. Maybe a little bit closer, you might be able to see a little better. Looks pretty good. Now if you have to fight to get the shaft to go in the rocker on the bushing is too tight, you're gonna have to go hone it out some more. Doesn't matter where the oil hole is, there's a groove, the oil goes the oil will find a way to get out. Okay, this is the intake, intake side. Now, if the rocker boxes have the holes on the same side, you know you got the wrong one. It's two different boxes. They look the same, but they're different. Okay. What I'm going to do is put the nut on the over here and tighten the shaft down. So put the sharp edge toward the box. That way it looks a little better. The nut does not want to go on there. the shaft works, the rocker I mean works. Goes up and down and slides side to side. This one has a lot of pressure on this one. One of those springs is really stiff. This is the one that's stiff. Man, that is a lot of stiffness on that thing. It's 
see it shouldn't be it should have to be just a little bit of pressure on it see how little that is that's way too stiff that's three times the pressure Whoop. that's really really stiff see how light that is that's too stiff it'll burn itself up being that tight way too stiff Let me stretch the hell out of that damn thing for some reason. Yeah, it's way stiff. So that's no good. Bad part. Let me go hunt down a stock one. The part scavenger hunt. It's on the shelf someplace. You know, one of these boxes here. Let me go this one. There's more of these stiff ones here. I don't like those stiff ones. There's a little weak ass flimsy one. Hmm. Looks like all I got is stiff ass ones in here. I don't like stiff ass ones. Alright, well, looks like they're all going to be. Stiff ass ones. Damn, those are stiff. I thought they were a little bit lighter tension in that one. Appeared not to be. Yep, feels about the same. Stiff. All right, well, we'll have to reuse it. I guess that's what they're supposed to be. I like the lighter ones better. Let's drag. More power. It's not like the rocker arm moves back and forth any, so... All right. Yeah. quite so bunny as it was but it's still stiff. Yeah, I like the light one better. Okay now we take our quad seal. Stuff in the box. Takes what's left of your thumbnail which I almost got nothing left. Push it in there between the shaft and the cover. See how it pokes up there a little bit? Damn that's not even a nail that's just thumb. <laughs> So get it recessed in there so it's in there correctly. That when you tighten the nut down, you won't shear off the corner of it. Cause a leak. Plus you don't want any kind of a twisting action going on. Alright, so that's in there correctly now. Take our Allen. Take a little bit of oil and put it on the face here. That way it'll slip and slide on the rubber and not tear the oil in. You don't want to tear it, and you don't want to twist it. There it goes. Looks to oil, put on the tip. Okay. Everything's good and free. Appears to be free and working. So we got a rocker box hidden fixture too now. So here's another holding fixture. Yep. Gotta have all those holding fixtures. See how nice that looks? It's a nice holding fixture, so. <clears throat> okay, this one here. Put the seals over here.
nice and light. I like that. Okay, put the O-rings in here, just like before. Now I kind of want to wad it up a little bit. Okay, that one all done. All right, there, that's what it looks like. It almost looks like a bike now. Too bad you can't run it that way. Let's fix it first. Okay, so now we got to do some more work. So I got to do the ignition timing, or I got to screw around with the heads and cell and rocker boxes. It's easy to do the ignition timing now. So we'll be back. We'll show you how to set the ignition timing.